Hey, it's Brian back once again here at Climber with our Bird Engineering Thunderbird. And we're going to go through and take an inventory of what we're missing, what's broken or worn out, and our unknowns. And we'll try to make some of those unknowns into knowns and get a shopping list of what we need to do and what we need to buy and what we need to scour eBay for um, for the next six months or so. So, let's get to it. Even before we decided to buy this bike, the first thing we noticed is obviously the chain is missing and the chain guard that goes there, though somebody improvised a pretty decent one here that will at least keep you from getting your pant leg torn off. The other thing that's missing is the connection here between the throttle cable and the actual carburetor or I think it connected to the governor rod here and then there's also no hose on the tank connecting to the carburetor. So that's pretty much the only things that are missing missing. Then as far as what's worn out, I mean, you start with the tires, that's pretty much a given with most project bikes or cars or anything. Um, the DOT code on the front indicates it was made in 1982. You're probably going to want to make a note of what size is on there now. And these are two and a half by ten. Chances are you're not going to be able to look up something as obscure as this online. Obviously the seat is a hunk of plywood that somebody found and improvised a seat with. It certainly doesn't look as factory engineered as the rest of the bike. And then this is just loose foot peg. I'm missing their rubber bits. Spark plug here. It looks like it's from a small block Chevy or something. It's certainly not from a lawnmower motor. I revised my list and added wrong also to the broken and worn column because uh, it certainly does not look like the correct spark plug. And then unknowns. Well, unknowns, you basically have the condition of your engine and then bearings and whatnot, and all that stuff. You really have to test it as you go along. The front fork, has no compression left in it so I think probably it's rusted up in there. The motor um, got an issue here where it's missing a couple of bolts and this cover is not really attached very well so we need to get in there and see what's what. But we know that, well we don't know if it's the right motor for this bike because they pretty much all look alike. We do know that we've got good compression, so that's always a good sign. Um, we ought to use a spark plug socket, but there's enough room on these that you can just get a 13 16 wrench on there. So now we're going to do the old mechanics test, where you pull it out and lay it aside there. And if all goes well, you see a spark. So we've got spark. So we've got two of the three ingredients you need to make the motor run. And now, let's check out the condition of the carburetor. We pull a float bowl off this carburetor. Let's see how bad the fuel situation is. Ooh, well, it's not great, but certainly have seen worse. All kinds of varnish on there. Simple little design for a carburetor, but certainly not much like a motorcycle carburetor. Luckily, we have a small engine repair manual so we can figure out exactly what the deal is with this Tecumseh carburetor. So in our testing, we came up with compression, yes, spark, Yes, there's a nice fat spark. 
Fuel? Well, we're going to have to clean the varnish out of there and then we will have fuel, but so far, no. But unfortunately, one of the things we did come up with when we were playing around with this is the fact that the engine shroud is marked 2.25 horsepower, and that is not correct. So either this has the motor from something else in it, or uh, it's got the shroud from something else on it. But Tecumseh didn't mark their motors anywhere except for the tag on the shroud here. So what we're gonna have to do, take the cylinder head off and just roughly measure the bore and the stroke. And with that and the specs in our manual, we should be able to figure out what displacement it is, which would give us some idea of what the horsepower rating should be. Now I didn't want to take the cylinder head off because taking the cylinder head off on pretty much anything means uh, fitting a new head gasket. They're only really made to be torqued down once. But there's no other really good way to measure the bore and stroke on this. Um, and when I took it off, you can see here, it was starting to blow anyway. Probably it got too hot because it got lean, because the carburetor was all gummed up and it wasn't getting enough gas. So there you have it. So normally to measure the bore and stroke, you're going to want calipers that measure to like hundredths of inches. But for now, we've got a decent metal ruler that will measure down to the sixteenths of an inch and that will at least give us a general idea of what we're dealing with here as far as bore and stroke. So our measurements work out to the stroke is about 1 in 15 sixteenths or in decimals 1.937 and the bore is about 2 and 5 eighths or 2.625 now, in our small air-cooled motor book by Climber, you will see, well, that could be 2.625, 1.938, well, that could be a V40 or an HS40, and well, that would be the four horsepower motor that it should be, and not the deuce and a quarter that it says on this shroud. So, all right. Here we are at the end of day two with the project bike, project mini bike. And as you can see, it's actually looking worse than when we started. But we now know all of this stuff that's broken or missing or just wrong that needs to be replaced. And we also got some good news because we know that it's not a two and a half horsepower motor. It's the correct four horsepower motor. The carburetor is off. It's soaking to get all that crud out of there. We're going to order a head gasket and uh, we should be able to put it back together sometime later this week when all the parts get here. So yay for us. Maybe we'll be riding it before Memorial Day. Tune in next time here at Climber for the Project Minibike Project.